The topic of this video is determining the domain and range of a graph. This is a continuation of the previous video. Okay, so we've already looked at this graph and we've already used our learning teaching tool in order to find the domain. So now we're going to turn our attention to the range. And we have to be very careful with the range. We have to adjust our thinking. We have to adjust the way we look at a graph in order to do this effectively. All right, so a brief reminder, domain was a collection of the x's. So what we're about to do, range must be a collection of the y's. So we're going to look at our graph and we're going to see if we can identify some of the y coordinates and then come up with some sort of a pattern. Again, the method that I'm about to use right now is not the method I want you to use when you actually solve the problem. This is just a teaching tactic to help you understand the idea. I'll give you the method that I want you to actually use to solve these problems in future videos and maybe even just a little bit of this one as well. All right, great. So here we go. Let's start with points we know. We know for a fact that this point right here is on our graph. And we know that its coordinates are negative 3, comma, 0. Now, range is a collection of all of the y coordinates, which means we don't care about the negative 3. All we want is the 0. So 0 belongs in our range. So I'm going to plot a little dot at 0 on my learning and teaching tool over here to the side. This is the way I'm going to keep track of all of the y values that I get. All right, let's continue our journey upward here. We've got this point right there, which if we follow it over here, we can see is a y coordinate of two. And we've got this point right here, which we can see has a y coordinate of four. And this point right here has a y coordinate of six. And this point right here has a y coordinate of eight. Hopefully you're picking up on this pattern. Then we've got 10, 12, and an arrow pointing upward. So 10, 12, and an arrow pointing upward. Okay, now, just as before, we'd like to notice that this green dot and this green dot are connected, which means there are an infinite number of dots in between them. And the y coordinates of those dots go from zero to two, and they include the decibel numbers, like zero, and then 0.1, and 0.2, and 0.3, and 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.413, 0 0.4138, all of the teeny tiny numbers in between. In other words, all of the values between 0 and 2 are included. So we're going to shade all of the values between 0 and 2 over here as well, because we're collecting our y coordinates. In fact, the same thing is true for all of these. Between 2 and 4, we shade. Between 4 and 6, we shade. Between 6 and 8, we shade. Between 8 and 10, we shade. Between 10 and 12, we shade. And onwards towards positive infinity. The part of the graph we've analyzed so far has y values that go from 0 all the way up to infinity. But we can continue this journey in the other direction. Negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, and on towards negative infinity. When we plot those, we have negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, and on towards negative infinity. And just as before, there are numbers between the numbers, just as there are points between the points. And so we end up shading the entire number line. What that means is that the range of this graph is all real numbers. Every number in the world is represented in the collection of y coordinates, all the way from negative infinity on up to positive infinity. So we would write our range as the interval negative infinity comma positive infinity. All right, let's turn our attention now to the right wing of this graph. Remember, with domain and range, if a number is duplicated, we only list it once. So for example, this point right here, this is the point 3 comma 0, and the y coordinate is 0. So we would theoretically add 0 to our range, but we already have 0. It's already shaded. In fact, every number in the world is already shaded. So anything we get from the right half of this graph would just be a duplicate of something that we already got from the left graph. So this tells us that our final answer for the range is negative infinity to infinity. 
Now, I want to briefly mention the method that I want you to use to solve problems of this type, because we're going to use it in future videos. Range is a collection of the y-coordinates. A y-coordinate tells you how far to go up or down before plotting that point. So one way to measure the graph's range visually would be to find the part of the graph that is farthest down, find the part of the graph that is furthest up, and try to connect a path between them. If you can, then that's going to tell you your range. So let's do that very quickly. The point furthest down would be this one. And because it's going down forever, it represents negative infinity. The point furthest up would be this one. And because it's pointing up, this represents positive infinity. Can we trace a path from the lowest dot to the highest dot by moving along our curve without picking up our marker? The answer is yes. And therefore, we have all of the numbers in between negative infinity and positive infinity, which is the justification for why our range is this interval, negative infinity to positive infinity.